Hey viewers, this is SkyFi Audio coming at you from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Uh, SkyFiAudio.com is our website and uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Today I've got something uh, to top even the last unboxing video. We have a Marantz Model 8B, um, a new in the box. So it is not a sealed box. Um, someone already verified its contents, but this is pretty rare, as rare as they come in terms of vintage audio. Now we've had uh, other new in the box pieces here, especially from Marantz. We did a 10B not that long ago, which was the first one we'd ever seen. Uh, we've done the 500s, the Marantz Model 500 stereo amps, uh, and this one uh, tops it all. And I uh, thought I'd share it with you, what it looks like, uh, what it would have been, what the experience would have been back in the 1960s to have purchased a Model 8B, which is in fact an iconic amplifier from Marantz. This was a very good selling amplifier. It's regarded very highly from the both the collector and the audiophile communities uh, for its neutral, its warmth, and uh, its ability to reproduce uh, details, especially from an amplifier from this era. Uh, what's even cooler is that we have the matching uh, cage. <laughs> this would have been a $8 option back in 1962. This is the tube cage that I would have gone with it. And this one is sealed, never been opened. So we're gonna leave this one the way it is. Uh, we don't wanna disturb it, but let's uh, go ahead and unveil the Marantz Model 8B. And first of all, let's take a good look at the box, which is uh, a nice piece of history as well. Um, here on the label, we see that it was uh, sold uh, with PO number 737 back in the late 60s to someone uh, a firm called Schaefer Camera in Newark, New Jersey. And that makes sense. We're in New Jersey as well. So it wouldn't be that unusual for this to come from our local market. So here's the uh, shipping label from Marantz to Schaefer Camera. Uh, looking at the side of the box, we've got uh, the serial number stamped on here, number 88890. Uh, looks like a pretty low production number. Um, well, it was packed with uh, tender loving care. The Marantz 8B uh, dual 35, and that reflects its power. This is, in fact, a 35 watt per channel amplifier. Uh, Marantz, in their glory days, was uh, in Long Island City, New York. Long gone since. Here's the mirror image of the other side, and that repeats as well. So, let me tell you a bit about the Marantz. Uh, this was, um, again, made up in, in, made in Long Island, and it's, it's sold for about $250, uh, production years were somewhere between 1962 to 1966. Uh, $250 was a healthy amount of money back then, um, but it wasn't terribly expensive like some of the other pieces. So there were quite a few produced. Um, I don't know of any other one in its box, but I'm sure they're in some museum somewhere. Um, so it weighed in at about 57 pounds, which is a pretty heavy amplifier, uh, mostly because of the transformers. Um, as I mentioned, 35 watts per channel, about 0.5 uh, total harmonic distortion, and about 90 dBs of signal to noise ratio. Um, let's go ahead and, and crack this open and see what it looks like on, on the inside. Let me adjust the camera a bit. All right, so let's see. Um, at the top of the box, we've got uh, some instructions telling us to save the box and the packing material. So, mission accomplished. We've got it all here. So, it says Marantz takes various steps in the manufacture, test, and packaging. These original carton, have the dress grill, and to call them if you need another carton. And to make sure you ensure the shipment for its full value. So, pretty interesting piece there. Let's see what else. So, nice penetrations in the top of the box so you can get it out easily. And here we see that it is, in fact, uh, untouched and unmolested. Let's pull out the side packaging. This will make it a little easier to take out. Okay. Now, this being uh, 60 something pounds, it's going to be a, a heavy lift. So I might have to do this off camera. Yes, I am. Give me a second. I'll come right back. 
Right, we're back. I managed to get it out of its box without damaging anything. Um, I'm gonna try to unwrap this plastic without disturbing it much. All right, that was easy. So here it is. This is the carton containing all the tubes. This is also a sealed box. I am not going to open this. We'll leave that to we'll leave that pleasure to the the new owner. Um, yeah, out to output tubes enclosed. And then, yeah. So this is as clean as they come. Normally, you would have some scratches here from having the cage removed, but it's pretty clean. Oh, look! It ships with the the first stage tubes already in place and. Let's have a look and see what they've got. Those appear to be electronic tubes, USA made. So these are rebranded RCAs. Uh, so these two tubes here are RCAs and these just say electronic tubes made in the USA. Okay, here's the biasing knob. This allows you to bias the EL34s utilizing this meter as your reference point. And then let's have a look at the back. All right, standard stuff here. Um, a captive power cord with the same factory wrap you would have found. Slow blow fuse at two and a half amps, the serial number matching the outside of the box, and taps for left and right speakers at 16.84 ohms with a common tap here. Wow, look at these RCA connectors. I've never seen a set that isn't corroded or in need of some attention. It's pretty neat. Um, and then the logo down below, Moran's Company, Long Island City. Okay, we're not gonna fire this up. We typically don't uh, power on uh, vintage new stuff unless a client who purchases it requests from us to have it tested prior to shipping. Um, so this will sit in this state. We'll probably wrap it back up. So what is this good for? This is good for someone looking to either, you know, complete a collection or put together a vintage system um, with the absolute highest quality you can in terms of cosmetics and performance. Um, while some of the components in here will have aged, um, I'm willing to bet this is gonna fire up and work within spec even right out of the box. Um, the next owner can in fact hire us if they want us to address any of the power supply components to make it uber reliable and to make sure that nothing has in fact aged. But uh, we're guessing that this will work right out of the box. Give her a little fuss. Would be a nice match for a pair of JBLs or some Altec Lansings or even some Tannoys, uh, also about from the same period. Something not requiring more than you know 20 to 30 watts would be a good pairing. Now, back in the late 60s, the match to the 8B would have been the Marantz Model 7 preamp. We've got a few on our website if you're curious to see what those look like, and also the Marantz 10B tuner, which was a Really neat, very complex tuner, also from the 60s. Uh, those three pieces would have gone very nicely together. And since Marantz didn't really make a turntable, you would pair this up probably with a, a Thorns uh, TD-124 or a Garrard 301 with some sort of vintage cartridge on it. In terms of speakers, as I said, some JBLs, studio monitors, maybe some Tannoy Ardens from the 70s. Uh, this would also go well with um, you know, anything from from Altec Lansing, some voice of the theater, even some clip speakers, uh, some high efficiency clip speakers would be a good match to this. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is Sky Fire Audio bringing you a unboxing of Marantz Model 8B. Uh, you can visit this piece on our website at skyfiaudio.com. Thanks for watching.